In this video, the cheapest, most natural way to meet your individual body's electrolyte requirements, and we're gonna keep it as simple as salt. Sea salt, of course. An electrolyte is a medium containing ions that is electrically conducting through the movement of those ions, but not conducting electrons. Why do we need them? Sodium assists muscle contractions and nerve functions. Chloride helps keep proper fluid and acid-base balance in your body. Put the two together and you've got sodium chloride, aka salt, something that your body will die without. Unfortunately, most salts are stripped of the rest of their minerals, leading to electrolyte imbalances. Not fun. Even pink Himalayan salt lacks the nutrients contained in natural sea salts and can even contain heavy metals from explosives used to mine them. Um, thanks, but I like my salt to look like salt and not shrapnel. <laughs> Potassium aids in muscle contraction, fluid regulation, and mineral balance. Additionally, it plays a key role in shuttling glycogen into your muscle bellies. This is why a hard, dry physique is impossible to achieve without a diet that supplies adequate potassium. Magnesium prevents cramps and is responsible for over 600 known bodily functions. So if you're deficient in magnesium, there could be one of 600 symptoms you'll experience, but that's for another video. This is why when you cramp in your workout, it could be potassium, sodium chloride, or water that you're lacking. If you cramp at night, that's usually a sign of a magnesium deficiency. That's right. So they are critical to your health and as bodybuilders, they are essential to our results. I used to be the guy buying every electrolyte supplement under the sun after realizing how much money I was spending on products that usually had artificial sweeteners, dyes, and other chemicals that I didn't need, I noticed something. The overwhelming majority of nutritionists and coaches that we're studying and consulting with do not typically advocate electrolyte supplementation because a species appropriate diet High in protein and quality fat should provide the proper amount of electrolytes that your body needs to thrive, assuming that you're avoiding toxic anti-nutrients such as oxalates, which will steal these precious minerals from your food and prevent your body from using them. In that case, then yeah, you probably need to supplement them. Since refining my diet, my wife's and my kids' diets, the vast majority of the athletes that we're coaching I've noticed my electrolyte needs dramatically decreasing and have been able to identify what and how much of each electrolyte my body operates best on. Same for everyone else across the board. Being an athlete myself and a meat-based nutrition coach, I have found it easiest and most cost-effective to meet these electrolyte needs through the use of natural sea salts only. I'm going to show you how we do it from two different angles depending on your goal. Number one, general health and athletic performance, which is the easiest way to go about it. And number two, which is optimizing your physique. This is very meticulous for advanced lean hypertrophy athletes prepping for a show or for a photo shoot. Please understand that I am not speaking as a doctor. My whole goal as a coach is to communicate to you how to stay out of the hospital. <laughs> uh, that being said, this is my experience, my opinion, and my advice for how to best feed your pet rat. Right? Let's leave it at that. So for general health and athletic performance, assuming that you are on a low carbohydrate diet with adequate protein and dietary fat, your body should communicate to you via the hormones ghrelin and leptin the precise amount and type of food to consume. When you are thirsty, drink. <laughs> I feel kind of dumb just saying that. Your pee should be light yellow. So dark yellow means that you're dehydrated and crystal clear pee means that you're overhydrated. This can cause electrolyte balances by flushing out what you consume faster than your body can absorb them. Hello, brain fog. From there, salt your food and even your water if you're one of those people <laughs> like me. Uh, just salt it to taste. If it's too salty and unappetizing, then you can lay off the salt because that's your body's way of saying, hey, we have all the sodium that we need here. Please be careful not to overconsume sodium. You should notice if this is the case pretty quickly if your body weight increases a pound or two the next day and if you're retaining extra water. Chronic overconsumption of sodium can cause your blood pressure to rise and may contribute to heart disease. The nice thing about natural sea salts is that they're a lot lower in sodium chloride than refined table salts and uh, like pink Himalayan salts. Therefore, you're a lot safer sticking to what's most natural. Most athletes find the best results with a 2 to 1 sodium to potassium ratio. 
Robert Sykes, a professional ketogenic bodybuilder and competition coach, also recommends this protocol in his book, Ketogenic Bodybuilding, which has been my manual for four of my recent competitions and my go-to reference for my athletes. Currently, I'm revisiting it as I'm cutting again to model some new Skull Bells merchandise. To quote Robert on pages 176 and 178, in my experience, most people incorporating a well-formulated ketogenic diet tend to respond well to a 2 to 1 ratio of supplemental sodium to potassium. The relationship between sodium and potassium in your body plays a major role in the level of intracellular and extracellular water that you are holding. For those of us that are not concerned about the vanity aspect of water retention, uh, I simply recommend supplementing sodium to taste and making sure that your potassium remains about half of what your sodium intake is. And don't forget about magnesium. The RDA recommends anywhere from 125 to 600 milligrams of supplemental magnesium. So how do you hit these numbers using only natural sea salts? Glad you asked. Most sea salts, such as Celtic sea salt, fine ground, and Redmond real salt, although technically that one's an ancient sea salt, kind of like a pink Himalayan salt, these are all typically rich in minerals, but without any noteworthy source of potassium. That's why we use and advocate Celtic sea salt's pink potassium cave salt and their gourmet kosher salt. The pink potassium cave salt is an ancient sea salt mined from a cave in Spain containing a little over half as much potassium as sodium. That's pretty good. I can't find any other salt that has that much potassium. If anybody knows of anything, let me know. <laughs> uh, and then their gourmet kosher salt. This is a very cost effective fresh sea salt sourced from Guatemala that is very rich in magnesium. So I've been consuming these two salts almost exclusively all throughout my last four bodybuilding shows. And I'm using them to cut again right now and don't plan on stopping using these salts anytime soon. I love them. <laughs> uh, if you simply consume these two salts to satisfaction, meaning any more salt than that would seem unappetizing, and consume four times as much cave salt as gourmet kosher salt, then you will land within the two to one sodium to potassium ratio about perfectly. Okay, great. So we're set on sodium and potassium. However, highly active athletes may still require additional magnesium supplementation. Magnesium is the tricky element of the three. Since it has less impact on your daily exercise than sodium and potassium do, we do not need to get meticulous about how to track this one. However, magnesium deficiency will cause a whole host of problems that you're definitely going to want to avoid by making sure that this base is covered too. Your body will best absorb magnesium and other vitamins and minerals if your diet is free from foods that are high in oxalates and phytic acid. These toxic anti-nutrients found in most plants require your body to use up these precious nutrients to allow them to pass through your system safely. This is why diets that are low in anti-nutrients, such as the carnivore diet, reduce your requirements for magnesium supplementation because your body is actually using everything that you're consuming and not wasting it in the form of poop or worse yet, kidney stones. Your best bet in terms of getting magnesium from your diet is going to be steak. Just good old fashioned red meat, okay? Particularly steak. So there's 120 milligrams of magnesium in a pound of steak. There's 64 milligrams of magnesium in a pound of ground beef. And then heart has 100 milligrams. Uh, liver has 65 milligrams per pound. Who eats a pound of liver? That's a lot of liver. <laughs> uh, and then bone broth, uh, 17 milligrams per cup, which is eight fluid ounces. My own blood work, ability to recover from my own bodybuilding training and long distance running and mental focus all indicate that I operate just fine without any supplemental magnesium. However, after a particularly challenging workout or a day that for whatever reason I'm concerned about magnesium deficiency, I will take a salt bath that's high in magnesium. Uh, I'll supplement with Celtic Sea Salt Electrolive Drink Mix, which has a whopping 350 milligrams of magnesium, or simply pop a metabolic nutrition magnesium capsule just to be safe. That usually fixes the late night muscle cramps after particularly challenging training days. Okay, bodybuilders. When we say bodybuilding, we're referring to competitive and non-competitive athletes who are maximizing muscle mass, minimizing body fat and perfecting their peaking protocol. If that's you, here's a couple quick examples of how we track. So Holden Henderson and I are both 10 weeks out from the open natural. We track these numbers consistently throughout the week and then we refeed on Fridays. This is a peaking protocol. 
And what we do is we simply increase sodium, potassium, water, protein, and fat, because we're not eating carbs, all by 30% across the board. This results in a temporarily enhanced physique for about 24 hours, depending on the athlete, in which the goal is to see visibly harder, drier, fuller, and more vascular muscle bellies. Gains and veins is what we call it. <laughs> uh, Holden at a body weight of 165 pounds is consuming 1.5 grams of gourmet kosher and 6 grams of pink cave salt. This lands him at about 2,000 milligrams of sodium and 1,000 milligrams of potassium. Personally, I'm consuming 12 grams of pink cave salt and 2 grams of gourmet kosher salt. I simply load this wooden pocket traveler with my day's worth of pink cave salt. My job is to make sure that it's gone by the end of the day. And as for the gourmet kosher, the taste is absolutely phenomenal. So I like to use it as a finisher on top of my steaks. Comment below with whatever questions you got. Let me know if this made sense or didn't make sense. And if you found it helpful, please text this over to a buddy. You can find all of these products that I mentioned at supersetyourlife.com. We'd be honored to earn your business there. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video. In the meantime, stay salty.